Hello and welcome to the vlog which is coming to you this time from the hard standing area at Yelvertoff Marina and yes this is my boat out of the water once again it is somewhat depressing actually to be out of the water here again it just takes me all back seven months to when I was doing this last time but I've got some things to do and it makes sense to do them out of the water. Let's just recap how I got to this point. I'd got back to Yelvertoff the day before and now took the boat round to their slipway where expert Gary, that's him there, and marina manager Neil would haul the boat out on their giant hydraulic trailer which you can just see in the water. Once it's out they pull the boat forward and then back it up in a display of precision driving that Lewis Hamilton himself would be proud of. I reckon Neil and Gary have future careers as airport ground staff if the marina business ever dries up for them. Inch by inch the boat is backed up towards one of the substantial railway sleeper logs that the base of the boat will eventually sit on. Then more logs are pushed under the front so that it's supported at both ends and not just nose diving into the gravel. Neil can then waggle a stick and lower the boat gently onto the supports. Once down, the trailer can very carefully be pulled out from under the boat. Sad to say, that paintwork I spent so much time doing last autumn hasn't weathered well, showing up my lack of preparation before I slapped a couple of coats on it. I knew it was a quick and dirty job when I did it, so this is not entirely surprising, but I'll need to touch these up again. But now, the main reason for the haul out the rusty gas locker. You may recall back in April the gas locker looked like this, extremely soggy and the base covered in a mammoth amount of flaking rust. It was frankly disgusting and terrifying. I scraped all the loose rust out and ended up with a massive bag of it, but I couldn't actually fix the problem then because the locker vent holes, which you must have for safety, were stupidly put on the water line of the boat so as you move along water keeps coming in and it doesn't drain out properly hence the rust. Lifting the boat out means a dry locker which I can now fix. Step 1. Take the two gas cylinders out. Tap turned off, gas spanner applied in the opposite direction to normal because that's how gas cylinders are made. They have quite the pleasant chime when you strike them. Not that I advise it. They're 13 kilograms each and fairly recently installed so they're going to be heavy to lift. I shall stick them out of the way to the front of the boat. This is what I've got to tackle and this is the tool I will attack it with. It's a cordless drill with a steel wool attachment. I've also got a different smaller one for the corners. Here goes then inside the locker with the drill. Don't do as I did and only wear a knotted hanky as a mask. That was stupid of me and I felt ill for days afterwards. Well after just several minutes hard work it turns out that the batteries on my cordless drill have apparently the lifespan of a fly and they are tired already and if I have to recharge them for a couple of hours well this is going to take forever so I'm resorting to simply using the drill by hand and just scrubbing it across the floor of the gas locker to raise the rust and it's actually doing a better job than when it was drilling. Yes this really is surprisingly effective but boring and hard work. Gets rid of the rust though. The gas locker is now thoroughly de-rusted. I gave up doing it by hand and ended up borrowing a mains electric drill from expert Gary, the marina maintenance guy, and I ran that off the um, boat's batteries through the inverter for a while with those attachments on the end and got rid of all the loose rust. Went round with a screwdriver afterwards, making sure that there were no further bits to be prodded off and all is fine. I've given it a bit of a dab down with white spirit this morning just to remove any dirt or contaminants, and now it's pretty much ready for for me to apply the um, this stuff, the Furtan Rust Converter. Now weirdly, you are supposed to apply the Furtan, it does say this on the instructions, onto damp metal. So I've also got a sprayer here filled with water and you just have to give the whole gas locker a light spraying with water to make it damp before you apply the Furtan Rust Converter. I know it sounds a bit mad, but that apparently is what you do. 
I won't use the whole pot, so I'll splosh a load into this beaker and work from that. A good squirt of water and let the brushing commence. It has a rather vinegary smell this stuff and it's quite pongy so I was glad to do the last bits outside the locker leaning in from above where I could get some fresh air. Then it just needs to work its chemical magic for 24 hours, converting the rust into something that isn't rust. Meanwhile, back in the bat cave, I hadn't planned on sorting out the bits of rust in the well deck lockers, but as I'd got the fur tan out and the lockers were dry, I thought I'd tackle them too. It's amazing just how much junk these lockers can hold, and how much chaos can be made when you unload it all into the front of the boat. That's the bottom of the port locker. It's not too bad, but you can see there are little patches of rust which I've scrubbed out with the wire brush tool to remove the worst of the metal. And this is why they're rusty. The well deck, including the water tank filler, drains out through the sides of the lockers and along the back of the bulkhead out to the side of the boat, but as it's all flat, the water can pool and stagnate and generate rust. With the fur tan now dry after 24 hours, I'm supposed to go in there with a damp sponge and wipe off any black dust residue which is presumably the converted rust residue left in the gas locker. After that, it's ready for painting. Wiping it down does feel a bit weird as it seems you're wiping the stuff off, but it is just loose dust that comes away. That done, I can get started with this stuff, red oxide primer paint. Two coats of primer later, in amongst the aforementioned chaos, you'll notice this bilge paint. And this is the transformation it makes to a gas locker, which is looking a whole lot smarter. But I know what you're thinking, how are the well deck lockers looking? Something of a disaster last night when it rained torrentially, and I discovered that all the water was running off the roof forwards and down into the well deck because the boat on its chocks was actually tilted forward slightly so where the rain would normally go back and out the drain holes it all just ran like Niagara like you wouldn't believe down over and into the well deck and of course the well deck just that very morning had received its second coat of bilge paint and there was about an inch of water in it and I was mopping it and I was sponging it and uh, the rain was chucking down it was a nightmare now in the end I ended up forming a dam out of plumber's mate putty and a sea searcher magnet which actually did surprisingly well at holding the water back on the roof but by then the well deck was absolutely sodden. This morning the folks at the marina have actually shifted the boat up at the front and put another chock under it so now the boat is tilting back again so any further rain that's fine it'll go backwards. All I've got to do now though is dry the well deck out properly and then give it a little bit of a sand and reapply that second coat. And just to be sure, I then went over all the painting with this stuff too, bituminous blacking. Ooh, shiny, shiny well deck locker. That's now water resistant, I hope, after two coats of that stuff. And the other side. And the gas locker. Now if any water comes in and pools, it shouldn't get through to the metal to rust it. Hooray and hurrah! gas back in and I'm pretty pleased. That's it for this one, thanks for watching.